Hi, my name is John LaDrew. Josh Welch. And today we're here to talk to you about how to use three different types of digital um, printers. Um, dye sublimation. Uh, Epson, uh, direct garment printing. The F2100. Yep. Which we have back here behind Josh. And the uh, Roland solvent printer cutter, uh, which prints directly on vinyl uh, and then is heat plied to your um, patch material. So we're going to kind of show you the basics of those three printers, how they work, uh, the artwork that we're using and how we're going to convert it uh, to work with these three different types of printers. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to print some samples for you. This is a printed patch. Um, and embroider it around the edge. So we're going to show you how to one, print it, but then two, uh, embroider it to um, to whatever, right? Yeah. So, so we'll embroider it and then you can heat seal it, do whatever you want with heat it. Heat seal but, it yeah. or stack it, it down later, yeah, absolutely. Stitch it directly. So, so we're going to put some heat sealing on the back of these things? Correct. Cool. So it's pretty easy, um, pretty straightforward, um, but I want to show you how the, the printers work and we're going to actually print for you on the 2100, but we're going to show you videos of printing um, on the um, solvent printer and on the die sub printer because we can't really fit them all in this room. Um, no. I also like to mention that we have uh, Nate here behind the scenes. Hey guys. He's our, uh, he's our uh, technical so, guru. Yeah, Video you know? DJ. Video DJ. Well, and he's doing a good job. I mean, look, it, we're up and running <laughs> and we're all smiling. Then we have Scott Stengel back there. He's going to answer questions if y'all have, have any. So throw them at us for sure. Um, first things first, let's take a look at our artwork. So we have a pretty simple concept here. Um, this is a, a, just a Colorado flag patch type uh, image that we've converted into a typical flag or typical patch size. So around three and three inches by two inches, uh, which is typical. Um, we kind of cut around the edges to make it a little bit more, um, uh, you know, patch looky, I guess, in shape. Um, from here, I have it basically set the way I want and, and in Photoshop um, I can I can take this and I can use it on a few different applications. I can use it um, for the direct-to-garment printer by saving it as a PNG. I can also use it on the uh, die sub printer by saying it, saving it as a PDF and I have both those files saved. Um, so what I want to do is show you um, real quickly in Illustrator <clears throat> Uh, what it looks like and what we would need to do for uh, printing on solvent print cut. I also want to mention, if you, if you guys haven't noticed how quick in, uh, Nate is by converting over from me talking to me showing the screen, and I think we all des deserve a round of applause for that. <laughs> He's a pro. All right, any hoodles. Uh, here is what we have a called a cut line. This cut line is basically a 0.25 inches. It's uh, labeled as a uh, cut contour line. You can see it barely in this on the screen there, but it says cut contour, capital C, capital C. Um, and that's what we need for the Roland printer cutter to be able to recognize where it needs to cut. So basically we created this line um, and created a stroke. You can label color it any color you want as long as the, the, um, uh, the color is a um, labeled cut contour. And then from here, all these other elements, it may print them out, um, but it's going to cut where it should cut. And I can show you that here. So this is printed on the solvent printer on a piece of, uh, tech, on a, a piece of heat transfer material. And um, I'll just show you quickly. This isn't exactly how we're supposed to do this, but I just want you to see that the, the, the whole image printed as a rectangle. You can kind of see the little elements in there, but the the angled portions where we wanted it to cut um, are visible and that's visible here and we'll show you more on that in a minute so that's the basics of the artwork side um, let's let's go to a video and show you how this is done um, and I'll, I'll narrate but let, I'll show you how this is done on um, this the solvent printer so Nate's on it. I'm going to mute mine and I'm just going to talk over it while, um, while it's printing or while it's showing here. So right now I'm in what's called VersaWorks, VersaWorks Studio. It's a very simple platform from Roland. Um, this is where you bring your artwork in and it's basically a rip. Uh, from here we can bring the artwork in, um, which I had saved as that EPS from Illustrator. I can tell it how many I want to print. In this case, I'm just filling up the sheet. Um, of the, the roll of media, which is 30 inches wide, choosing what media I'm putting it on, which is HTM3, 
uh, heat transfer material. Now it's just going to take a minute to spool and calculate what it needs to do to be able to print that um, on the right material. Um, it only takes a minute. This is really, really versatile um, material. It, once it's printed on this vinyl, it's essentially it's on there for good. Um, you've probably seen us talk about some of this stuff in the past, um, but what we really like about it is how quick, how quick one, how quick it prints, but two, how easy it is to uh, take this and transfer it to almost anything that you can lay flat and put on a heat press. So from here, um, it's gonna it's gonna continue to print. Then in a few seconds here, it's gonna cut, and I'm just gonna jump forward a little bit just to save a little bit of time so you can watch it cut. So now it's taking and it's cutting that one path exactly where it should be in that art. All right. So, and then from there, we're left with our media, printed on, cut out. From here, I'm gonna simply, I'm just gonna do one for, for ease of use. Uh, the thing with vinyl is you do have to weed it. So a lot of you, if you're vinyl uh, shop operators already, you're probably familiar with how to, um, um, to weed, weed away a vinyl that you don't want. Um, it's not terribly complicated. Uh, the co more complicated the design, the more complicated the weeding can be. But it's pretty simple. We weed away what we don't want, right? Right. Yeah. Text and stuff gets a little bit more hairy. Text but, can be yeah. hairy, yeah. And you've been there, haven't you, Josh? Yep. Um, and then we have to add what we call, this comes in a roll. This is basically transfer paper. It's called transfer mask. Um, it's specifically for this type of uh, heat, uh, heat transfer vinyl material because it doesn't stick to the material that you put it on. So if we're putting this on a jacket or on something else, um, it, won't, it, won't, um, it won't stick to that material. So I've done, I'm finished with base, the basic application. I peel away the backing. Now I'm left with the, the transfer on the mask. Yep. And then from here, I can put it on my material. So I'm going to show you quickly on the heat press how that's done. Um, this is really forgiving. You can't really mess it up. Um, if you do it too little amount of time, just add a little bit more time. If you do it too long, all you're really sacrificing is a little bit of vibrancy, but it takes a long time to get to the point where you've really messed it up. So there's really not much you can not much you can go wrong with applying this to any material with a heat press. Um, typically, we're at around 280 degrees for about 15 seconds. I have the the heat press up to almost 400 degrees because we're going to do some dye sublimation for you, and the timer is set for 75 seconds because it's for DTG. Um, so instead of resetting all those things, I'm just using these these settings, which aren't necessarily ideal for every application, but in this case, like I said, it's really forgiving. Um, peel away your backing. This is reusable if you ever want to reuse it. It doesn't make sense because it's really inexpensive, <laughs> but now it's on there. And this stuff will last the life of the garment, so it's not going anywhere. And then Josh can take this and start embroidering it. Exactly. Um, but we're going to do one more thing. We're going to show you before Josh gets into the, the fun embroidery yeah. stuff, which I know yeah. you all are here to see. You're just... <laughs> you're just um, Going through your emotions. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're just in, um, amusing me. Let's put it that way. To watch, watching this digital stuff. <laughs> um, now we're going to look at uh, dye sublimation. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, Melco sells a number of dye sublimation printers. Um, it's a really simple concept. Uh, we're basically printing on paper um, and then transferring that sub that paper to uh, some polyester type materials. So this video will be uh, um, an easy way to show you how that works. So this is called. Um, Disregard my talking on the screen. <laughs> we uh, we could li have you listen to that, but I sound like a bum. There's some buffoon. bad uh, 80s yeah. action movie overdubs <laughs> yeah, going exactly. on here. Like some movies. kung fu movies. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to throw in some kung fu sounds in the background, by all means. Um, so this is uh, Epson Edge Rip, and it's a very similar concept. I'm just bringing in my artwork and then adding as many um, uh, layers as I want to print. We're going to go across the whole edge of the printer. A uh, whole edge of the piece of paper. In this case, it's um, 54 inches roll. Um, then we just hit the print button. There's really not much more to it than that. Mm -hmm. That software is really simple. Uh, from here, it's, it only takes a few minutes to spool and it starts <laughs> printing quick. So this is the Epson new 6370 from Epson. It's fast, it's big, it's efficient, um, and it's affordable. Yeah. Um, there is a desktop version and then there's some more industrial type ones. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in Dysub, give us a shout. We can tell you more about it. But Dysub is really versatile. In the background, you see we printed on chloroplast. We have um, 
um, a patch back there. There's a banner. Um, <laughs> a, a, we can do mugs. You can do patches. Yep. Um, you can do um, plaques. I mean, yep. there's all sorts of stuff, stuff we can do. So from here, it, it, it prints, then it cut it. After it cut it, it left me with this sheet. So this is our, this is our printed sublimation. This is the easy part. The nice thing about sublimation is it doesn't really take much. You just kind of cut out. I mean, you don't even really have to cut it. You can right. just apply it to whatever. But um, now from here, I'm going to put this on twill material. And this material can be used just like you would use um, uh, for our other applications. We're printing on canvas for that other stuff. We're printing on white twill here. And this is a polyester twill. This is polyester yep. twill. Yeah, that's critical. That's a good point. You have to mention that. Um, Dye sub only works on polyester. It only sticks to polyester. Right. It'll stick to cotton, but it'll wash out. Yeah. So it's not even worth uh, not even worth trying to apply. And here I'm using um, just blue painter's tape. We talked about this last time. Josh, tell us about the tape. Yeah, the painter's tape. It'll hold up in the heat. It won't mm -hmm. uh, leave any sticky residue or anything. Mm -hmm. um, we still haven't ordered in any other tape. So yeah, and there are yeah. there is other tape. Yeah, though, there's right? a the heat transfer tape um, that you can get. It's usually like green or orange. It usually mm -hmm. comes and clear. It, and it just the whole point is it doesn't leave residue. Yes. On your material. So um, I'm just gonna hold this while I heat press this. So the key with <laughs> the key with um, heat pressing or the key with dye sublimation is your your dye sublimation printer is gonna typically do a good job. Epson's uh, printer is yeah. outstanding for a number of reasons, but the key to dye sublimation is you need consistent heat and consistent pressure. Yeah. So the heat press is critical. If you have a poor quality heat press, you'll likely not have a good sublimation technique. So we recommend Hotronics, really Insta is outstanding for yeah. uh, dye sublimation because you can put a ton of pressure down. Hotronics, after a little while, the pressure, uh, it'll automatically pop up. Yeah. So we really need about 40 seconds or so. I probably overdid it because I was just yapping away. Uh, but then once we remove our sublimated paper, um, we have a perfect, bright, vibrant piece of sublimation. Um, uh, sublimated on twine on twill looks really good looks great yeah super vibrant and bright so the last piece of the digital side and the piece that we wheeled a machine in to show you how it's done is the um, the Epson F2100 direct garment printer so this thing is really versatile I wanted to show you on the 2100 um, how it works really beyond just doing t-shirts because people buy this thing primarily for t-shirts But right. there's a lot more to it than that. So that's why we have it here. I'm going to switch spots with the yeah. old Josh here Let's transfer you see? Um, here. I'm going to show you the printer and then I'm going to go back over to the uh, uh, the printer or the computer and show you um, how that software works so we have a 10 by 12 tuck lock platen here. Uh, tuck lock platens, the, they're different than the Epson OEM platens for a number of reasons, but the nice thing about these platens is you can slide material in between these pieces of foam, um, and that really helps hold it down. Which is especially good with like canvas and stuff like that. Especially good yeah. for canvas, because if this is wrinkled or if it's not sitting properly flat on the, on the platen and there's nothing to hold it in place, yep. um, that can throw off the sensor. Um, we, always use a, we, can, we can always use tape. Tape works really well, um, but what we need to do is tuck this thing in and make sure it's nice and flat. And as you can see with the tuck lock platen, we can get that. So you can order these platens if you have a uh, 2100 direct to garment printer or an F2000 even. You can order these platens from us on shopmelco.com. Um, they're outstanding. We sell a ton of them. They're one of the best platen manufacturers in the industry for, uh, for um, direct to garment printing. So here's my piece of twill. Or this is canvas. I just put it on here on my 10 by 12 platen. Now I'm going to show you on my computer um, how we set this up in Garment Creator. And try not to look at that um, any longer than we have to. All right. <laughs> okay, so in Garment Creator, I'm going to actually close this out and start from the beginning for you. Um, and I am plugged in, so we're good. Okay, so in Garment Creator, Disregard the messy desktop too, please. Don't judge. Me. Uh, we have a tendency to judge people's messy desktops. Uh, okay, so um, here's Garment Creator. Real simple program. If you already have it, you know how easy it is. If you don't, watch me and you'll see how easy it is. Um, I'm going. I'm switching platens from my standard 14 by 16 to the 10 by 12, um, just because I have a small piece of twill and I have a small piece or a small piece of canvas. Um, from here. 
I'm going to print, I'm going to bring in my Colorado flag for DTG image. This was done again in Photoshop, just saved um, as a transparent background PNG. I drag it in and it's that simple. If I want to add more, I can do that. Um, under edit, I can add multiple multi images. And then here I can simply hit duplicate. It'll put it right over top and I can add more. So I can print as many as I want um, of this design. I can fill this grid. This is the 10 by 12 grid. I'm just going to hit OK there. And now I'm going to uh, tell it what I, how the printer I want it to print. So I want to print dark color t-shirt. If I printed black color t-shirt, uh, it wouldn't print any black ink. Um, disregard the background. That's just a, that's just a general layout. Um, that doesn't <coughs> affect what we're printing on at all. Um, but I'm going to print on dark color t-shirt. I have my canvas on the machine so I know what I'm printing on. Um, under print quality, I'm going to open all these up for you so you can see. So this under the basic twirl down setting, this is where we kind of get how much ink we're going to lay down and how it's going to work. Here, I'm going to, I only want to lay down just a little bit of white. Um, I, the one couple reasons why, my, my design is already, my material is already pretty light. I don't need to add a ton of white to make it vibrant. Um, but the color print quality, I do want to bump up. So I'm probably going to bump all that up all the way, just so I can get some maximum vibrancy. Um, under color density, I'll bump that up to five a little bit. White density, I'll just add a little bit extra. Um, and then I'll reduce the white area by one pixel just so we don't have any overlap if there is potentially any. And that's essentially it. If I was printing on black material, I might make this level five. Yeah. But because I was printing on light, I have a light pretreatment application on there, done with a spray bottle and dried on the heat press really quickly. Very little heat pretreat, just enough to help make that white bond. And then from there, I'm just going to press the print button. So now it's spooling. If you want to switch back to yep. the printer. You want to dance here a little bit? Graceful. Yeah. We're good. You have a question? Yeah. Good. That's a good time for it. What do you have? Right now? Yeah. Uh, I was asking, to my understanding, can you dye sub on cotton if you use some special chemical? Are you familiar with that? I'm not familiar with it. Um, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, though. So it's yeah. potentially possible. I think they have some kind of like a poly spray that you can put on okay. there. Um, I've never tested it either, so okay. I, can't, I have no say on that either. Yeah, but that's something worth looking into. Good Did question. Did you use pretreatment on the canvas? Yeah, so I used a light application of pretreat solution. I simply um, um, mixed Epsom pretreat solution uh, 90 to 1, 90% um, uh, water. Oh, it'd be 90% water, 10% pretreat. You got it. Yeah, I got it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so 10 to 1. 90, wait. <laughs> Nine. Nine. Nine to one. What time is it? I don't think I've had my coffee yet. <laughs> look, I look at my wrist like there's a watch on there. Or something. Um, uh, so yes, I used a light application of pretreat solution. So 90% pretreat, 10%, oh, excuse me, 90% distilled water, 10% pretreat concentrate. A really light application just with a spray bottle, just enough to give that white ink a little something to bond to. It probably isn't necessary, frankly, um, but it will help the white ink pop a little bit more. Yeah. So you can do it. Um, if you're doing light uh, garments, use just reduce your concentrate of pretreat. That should answer that. Okay. So now I'm going to print this. Um, it's only going to take a few seconds. I could have talked while uh, it was printing. Uh, but again, we're laying down a little bit of white ink. A couple things to note. Um, my platen height is really low. Uh, or it's really high up, it's really close to the garment. So if you can do that, you should um, bring your platen as close to the print head as possible. Typically one, uh, uh, three clicks down on the F2100 is where you want to be um, on a piece of cotton or something like that, like a t-shirt or a piece of twill. Um, I love this machine. It's super, super uh, um, flexible in what you can do with it. and. Uh, the exciting thing is we're doing not only doing these patches, but we can do socks and we can do hats and we can do uh, pant legs and jackets and pieces of leather, um, all sorts of stuff. So as far as quality and vibrancy and um, consistency, um, we get really the same, a really good quality stuff here, just like we're getting on anything else that we're doing. And the dye sublimation too. So, um, that works great. so yeah, it, it just just understanding how flexible all these pieces of equipment are is really the point behind all this. I'm just going to do a quick dry on this. I have the temperature way up <clears throat> for the dye sublimation, um, but I want to drop it 
down. And I'm just going to do a quick, a quick dry on it. Um, typically, we don't want to overcook it. Uh, the idea is the hotter it is, the more pressure and heat that you put on it, the more color loss you're going to have. So um, ideally, you would do it around 375 degrees for about 75 seconds with a fine layer of white ink. But I'm just doing a quick dry just so it doesn't get it, just smudge on Josh's hands. Um, but he's going to take it from here and um, yeah. I guess Let's I'm, put I'm not even going to say there. what yeah. you're going to do because this is a little out of my league, I think, at this point. All right, so we'll start off a little bit on the design aspect of this. So John explained how to, um, the cut line and all that on the, um, on the DTG and the Roland. Um, how we created that cut line is we we're using our, um, our walk stitch here in Design Shop is what we use so that when we cut that out, everything's going to line up with our embroidery, right? So <clears throat> what we did here, you can see the Colorado flag here in the background. That's not the right one. Um, but as we were saying earlier, it started out kind of square, rectangle. Um, and then we just added a border. There's a couple ways. You can come down here to the rounded corner, drag that up, um, and just slap it over there. So we'll go from here. We'll show you how to stitch that out. So I'm going to send this file over to the machine, which it should already be there. Um, and when I set this up, the first one is just the, um, the tack down stitch over here, or a placement stitch, sorry. So this number, this number one right here is a placement stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of grandma's vinyl from her couch, <laughs> and we're going to hoop it up. Uh, so it's just the vinyl in here, nothing else. We're going to take it over to the machine, and we're going to let that stitch go down. I'm going to hit OK. Bring it on over here. Make sure I have it centered. We're just going to let that run. <clears throat> so as you can see, it just laid our placement. I can pull it out of here so you can see it a little better too. Which camera do I want to go to, Nate? This one. All right. Let's let's see the yellow on my yellow flannel. It'll go really well. Anyways, it's a placement stitch, which is the um, the same as that cut contour line that we did on the um, on the Roland. So that being said, we're going to take our twill that we just printed and we're going to cut it out. Let's see how shaky my hands are from coffee all morning and how well I cut. Now you could probably set this up if you're running big production of this to have registration marks and cut it out on a plotter, but for this sake we're just doing the one patch. No use to doing that. My cuts aren't very great. Scissors is not good either. Those All right, from good. there, I'm just going to tack the back of this. So I got a handy garbage can down here so that I don't get spray tack all over my machine, my computer. So we should John. add that the, the um, you could take this material and put it in a, um, set it up so you could put it in a, an industrial, <clears throat> like, like a, a rolling cutter. Yeah, that's exactly it, what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Yep. It doesn't have to be done by hand. Yep. Um, but... We're doing it by hand, so. All right, I'm gonna add more spray tack because <laughs> I don't like that. Well, yeah, so while, while he's doing that, I know there was a question, Scott, can you repeat that? You have to repeat because I don't have a mic once I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, what vinyl would I be able to use on a BN twenty that would be suitable for embroidery as well? Okay, so what vinyl do you use on a BN twenty that you can embroider over, essentially? Um, the vinyl that we've been using, this HTM3 heat soft heat transfer material, that stuff is <laughs> ideal and I'll show you why. Um, this is an example of it where it's printed vinyl and then we embroidered around the edge of that. This is an embroidery around the edge of this. And if the camera, if I mean you can't see it, but what, one thing that's cool about this vinyl in particular is it's self-healing. So you're going to, it, when it, the needle punctures it, it's going to kind of reseal where it punctured. And we do a ton, nice, see Nate, 
Aren't we glad we have Nate's, them back Yeah, there? we'd be doomed without them. I mean, them. I would feel bad if I didn't give you a shout out early on because look at <laughs> how much you're helping us. Um, we really couldn't do it without you, buddy. Um, but, and I'm my, I'm, look at me, I'm like totally messing this up. But anyway, that is um, a really nice application on, um, uh, on this vinyl with embroidery around the edge. Uh, and it really just doesn't, it doesn't allow for, and we, we've taken this to a, a level where we've, we've done it on so many different applications with this vinyl in particular. It's yep. HTM3. You can get it um, on shopmelco.com. Roland makes it. There's a ton of other vinyls out there that are heat transfer material. Um, I haven't, frankly, tested them all, uh, but this stuff does work really it's well. Really and it, again, it's just, you know, applying this just like you would just like we did in our demo. So this would be a good example of another one. Stick it on the shirt, put an embroidery stitch around it. It works beautifully. Good to go. All right, Josh, you're back up. All right, just a quick recap. We uh, did our placement stitch over on the vinyl. We cut out the, um, the um, die sub application. We spray tack it. We come over here, place it down on my placement tack, or placement line. All right. It's down on there, and then we're gonna hit start. Um, how I had this set up is I did the first color, which was our placement. I had an applique hold, so it brought the, uh, the pantograph out. I sucked down the, the patch that we created, cut out, and hit start again, and it's gonna tack it, and then it's gonna do the nice satin border around there. <clears throat> sure sounds loud, but as far as embroidery machines go, this one's pretty quiet, huh? Yeah, pretty good, actually. Yeah. We're in a pretty confined space. Yeah. Not only is it a little loud in here, but it's also we're starting to get sweat out from that heat yeah. press. It's really good. It's like a sauna. It is. <laughs> the Melco Men's Club in here. We're all just taking a spritz. Uh, that's what that smell is. That was intentional. Comic relief. <laughs> Poor attempt at comic relief. It's like real production in here. You yeah, know? it is. Loop the next one up and wait. It's making me sleepy. All right. So, as you can see, we got our nice border around here now. I'm going to pop it out of this vinyl. Try not to break my hoop. All right. Popped it out. And that's what's nice about using this vinyl is after that satin stitch, it just pretty much punches right out of there. Nice. So, I'm gonna, gonna, what we're going to do next is we're going to heat seal the back of this so we can apply it to whatever garment that we want. Um, in order to do so, though, I'm going to take out, where'd that little things mm. go? Mm -hmm. We're going to take out the plastic part right here on the back of the patch. because we So don't the heat seal uh, works um, instead of having to embroider it on yes. to a garment. You can it's, just apply this heat seal and then... Yeah, which um, nice. it, I'm sure some of you try to apply them to hats and all that good stuff, um, which is kind of hard. Every hat's different. Um, with the heat seal, you can just put the heat seal on there and you have a bunch of these ready and you just get a heat press, hat press and mm -hmm. just... Slap it right on there. I'm just going to be a perfectionist real quick here. It's all right. You don't mind, do you? Nope. Okay. All right, heat seal. All right, this is our heat seal. So we're going to take our patch, and we're going to cut out another piece of this. Okay. I'm going to try not to get too much overlap So here. you use heat presses in embroidery too, huh? Yep, that we do. Wow. So we got our heat sealing backing on here, and as Nate 
See, once again, back to Nate. Yep. Give a good idea of wrapping this in a piece of paper. Otherwise, you're going to get glue all over your platen, all mm. over your heat press, all mm. that good stuff. So we're just going to wrap it up in this. Fold it in a piece of paper. Yep. Cool. We'll take it over to the heat press. And How long do you heat press and it for? Just hit it for a little bit. Same thing with kind of like it's everything pretty, else we're doing. Yeah, you, you can't really mess it up. You're pretty so, uh, flexible. On and we got good pressure, so. Maybe too much pressure, huh? Yeah, too much. Right, hold on. It's on the hover. All right, you're set, buddy. Do you have any questions there, Scott? Uh, what clear vinyl did you use? Do you have a link? I just posted it. You did? Okay, great. And it's already on it. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Well, that's you said it was from Grandma's couch, right? That's exactly what it was. Yeah. <laughs> the link so, was. The, the link right. was. Please don't put my grandma's address on there. <laughs> Josh, all these embroidery <laughs> people keep coming over. Nice. All right. So now we're just going to pull this out of here. And as you can see, we got glue or glue heat seal on everything. So a couple of things you can do now, you can just tuck this stuff back or we're just going to trim it up, get some of this heat sealing on it because we don't want all that to get stuck on our garment either. Right. So, so you could just trim it up. Huh? Yeah. Just trim it up, make nice. it look good, which we have one done somewhere. Yeah. So sort to of me, I'm looking like a... No, no. That's production, man. Production, production, We got to show them how it's done. We're not trying to sugarcoat anything. <laughs> this is the reality. But the cool thing about it, obviously, is the flexibility, all the things you can do. And yep. from here, there it is. And you do not have to do that one off. You can do yeah. a right. whole sheet of it. Yeah, right. Right. exactly. Would so you do me a huge favor. If you have Illustrator up and yeah. can do it, would you copy your locator stitch from Design Shop and paste it into Illustrator? Sure. Do you have that available? Yeah. I have, let's see here, Design Shop. So. There is our locator. Uh, how I was doing, I'm sure Nate has a better way than me. Actually, I think I already have it up in Illustrator, but file. And then I was saving mine as an EPS. You got a better way to do yeah, that? Yeah, no, Nate? just copy it. Just copy? Just control, oh, yeah, copy and paste. Control C and then Control V in, in Illustrator. But I'm not my steps, so you have to say that. All right, so all I did was in the design shop, here's my locator stitch. I pulled it into a new. Um, screen so you guys can just see that. Um, I just control C and I copied that and I'm going into Illustrator and as you can see I already have, um, we'll go from scratch here and we'll get this out of here, but I already have the, the Colorado in there, the flag, and if we can control V just brought our locator stitch back in and now when we save that out, if we get it lined back up on there, that's all jumbled, but now that's our locator stitch on there. So that was, it essentially became our uh, cut contour line when we were running it on the roller. Right, 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 right. So, um, yeah, and, and then you switched it over. where it's going to be, Yeah, right? exactly. So we know exactly where to cut on that. Um, yeah. This that's, stuff's cool. Yeah, it's not too hard to do. I mean, we yeah. were probably a little long-winded doing five machines on it, but you can show the versatility uh, of it. Four and, machines. Four machines, sorry. Yeah. But um, one thing, if you don't know this, um, I think we need to mention it, is um, what? How many machines? I Five. The heat oh yeah. Okay, we got <laughs> Nate over there, chiming in and making things correct. That's what he does. Uh, <laughs> uh, the point of all this is, yeah, just right. to show you what what all these pieces of equipment to do. But if you don't know this already, Melco sells all these digital pieces, these digital <clears> printers. <throat> Obviously, we're we're masters in embroidery, but we sell all these digital printers too, so you can do this type of stuff and be. Um, Professional, yeah, yeah, and just you know the the whole point is to be able to op offer that versatility to your customer base. Right. So your customers come in, they want stickers, they want decals, they want um, they need dye sublimation for mugs or for uh, plaques, um, some T-shirt type stuff, uh, the F twenty one hundred. So yeah. really, with just a few pieces of equipment that we have here, one stop um, shop. It's really versatile. But yeah, it's a one stop shop. You can yeah. do all the embroidery and basically all the digital stuff. With just a few pieces of equipment that are really relatively inexpensive. In a small space. I mean, in. we're in a tiny little spot right now. Right. So. Yeah. With these three pieces of equipment here in this small space, mm -hmm. we can get a lot done. Uh, but what we like to say is, really, you can in in a basement, you can have all of this equipment and really do the bulk of what your customers might be looking for. And that's why we that's why we offer all this stuff. Where did y'all grab the twill? Yeah. Where did we get the twill? Yeah. Where did we get the twill? Where did we buy the twill? Some Stalls. Place. For sublimation. Oh, for sublimation. Yeah, I think it is. It stalls. Uh, Mike Doe knows that. Um, um, and I mean, you can go. Or Twill USA, USA works really well. You can go to Joanne too. Uh, the big thing with the the die sub is it has to be the hundred percent polyester. So yeah. um, I've used. Uh, I went into Joanne's once and I bought some 
uh, it was like wedding dress polyester twill, and it worked perfect for the dye sub too. So just key is that 100% polyester yeah white and um, the, the cool thing about that is with dye sublimation is if you're doing a lot of if you're doing a lot of twill stuff um, you don't need to stock rolls of black twill or pink twill or red yep. um, you can just buy white twill print off on your dye sublimation printer the color that you want um, and then and then use that um, that really keeps your investment in materials cost low but it also gives you that versatility if you mm -hmm. run out for example you can always just print right. another roll of twill, another sheet, and, that's um, and cut it out. Also coming back to running in small spaces too, you don't have to stock right. 12 different colors. Yeah, you can just, just have rolls of white. Special special colors that aren't available. Yeah, yeah, gradients is a big one. Yep, Which, gradient. stay tuned, because yeah. that one's coming up per yeah. Scott's request and Nate's request, <laughs> we'll Mike Doe's cool. request. Everybody wants to see gradients on dye sublimation. Um, instead of having to embroider those ingredients, we can dye sublimate them. So. This is a great patch. Josh, would you like to put it on your motorcycle jacket? Absolutely. All right. That's where it's well, going. You can have it. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. It was great questions. Um, keep them coming. By all means, we can, we can get back to answering if you have any questions later mm -hmm. on. Um, and I'm John LeDrew. Josh Welch. You guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.